hello! My name is Louisa, and today I'd like to show you how to make your own open-topped thimble. You can make it right at home from common household materials. It's scrappy, it's funny looking, I think it's hilarious, and it also happens to work really well. So I think you'll enjoy it. If you don't happen to already own a store-bought thimble, this will do the trick really well, project after project, and I think we should get started. Let's talk materials and tools. So you will need light cardboard, not corrugated cardboard. This is more like cereal box or, for example, pasta box, frozen dinner box, that sort of thing. Um, you won't need a whole lot. This is three by seven inches, I believe, and that is more than enough. You'll also need masking tape. So I've tried a few different types of tape for this project, and masking tape is still my favorite. It's strong. It also has a nice texture to it that's going to help prevent the needle from slipping when you're pushing the thimble against the eye of the needle. But if you'd like to try some other types of tape, feel free. Just know that that texture is very helpful and possibly downright necessary. I do have these other pretty tapes from a craft store many years ago. They're basically like washi tape, except that instead of paper, they are fabric. And then they have an adhesive and you peel away the paper on the back and they're nice and sticky and you can wrap around your thimble that way. However, as I say, masking tape is perfect as well. You'll need a pencil or pen. You'll need a ruler. So I love me a good clear gridded ruler. If you happen to have one, I would recommend that you use it, but you can do just as good a job with a regular 99 cent ruler from the grocery store or the pharmacy or wherever. Um, that'll work just as well. You'll also want a pair of scissors that are strong so that you can cut through your cardboard. And finally, you'll want something that has a right angle. So this is an envelope and it has that 90 degree angle that I can use sort of as a square if you don't have a square itself, the tool called the square, or a clear gridded ruler, then something like an envelope or the corner of a book will work perfectly. Let's talk quickly about the type of thimble that we'll be making today. So you may be most familiar with closed top thimbles, which as it sounds like, have a closed top so that the tip of your finger is not exposed. Um, they come in many materials, plastic, metal, leather, rubber, um, and they ha have definitely their uses and are great for certain techniques, but my favorite technique uses an open-topped thimble um, which allows you to push at the needle from the side of the thimble and yet still allows you sort of some, some breathing for the tip of your finger, making it comfortable to wear for longer periods of sewing time. Also gives you a bit more sensitivity when you're handling the fabric as you sew. So we today will be making an open-topped thimble, but not out of metal. <laughs> Um, we'll be making it out of household materials um, and it will look something like this when it's done. Now this one's been used for a couple projects already so it's looking a little tired and a little used but it works great and I would highly recommend it. These are also little thimbles that I made using fancier tape, um, sort of a fabric tape with an adhesive on the back but if you don't happen to have adorable tapes at home, masking tape will do perfectly well also. Let's talk about the anatomy of a thimble. 
So this is the type of thimble with which you are probably most familiar. It's a closed topped thimble. So it has this crown or cap up here and it has sides and then many though not all thimbles also have a rim, sort of a, a ridge at the bottom or sometimes the top which helps to prevent the needle from slipping and poking into the finger beneath the thimble. Um, so this is a pretty standard layout. There are also these dimples that, little indentations that help your needle's eye, the back of the needle, to find a little safe groove so that when you're pushing the thimble, the needle stays in place long enough for you to push it through the fabric without the needle kind of swinging away. Um, so the thimble that we're going to be making today though is modeled off of that open-topped tailor's technique thimble. So we don't have this cap here, we just have open space through which the tip of the finger can slightly peek out. Um, but we do have little indentations on store-bought metal open-top thimbles. The type that we'll be making though, I do want to note, does not have indentations, it's just masking tape. So I do find that the masking tape has plenty of texture to prevent the needle from slipping. Um, it kind of does the job of the indentations, the little dimples here. If you find as you're sewing that you have the needle slip quite a bit, then you could tape an additional little strip of cardboard, little narrow strip, to the base here, and that should stop your needle from going past that ridge and toward your finger. You are almost certainly already familiar with the anatomy of a needle, but just for review, here's the eye of the needle. This is the hole through which you thread. And here is the tip. This is the point that pushes into your fabric and that you sort of weave through the fabric. And then you take your thimble and come along and push so that the eye of the needle goes into one of the indentations of your store-bought thimble or the eye of the needle holds into the texture of the tape and you're able to push and the needle glides through the fabric and then you come out and pull through. Let's draft our thimble pattern. So we can draft it directly onto the cardboard that we're using you can also, of course, draft it onto a piece of paper, cut it out and trace it over, whatever you'd like, but I like to draft it directly onto the cardboard. So step one is going to be to draw a horizontal line somewhere in the middle of your cardboard space here, and then you're going to want to make two tick marks that mark out a three and three quarter inch length. So I'm gonna make one, and then I'm going to measure three and three quarters inches, and right about there is the other for me. Then find the midpoint, which should be one and seven eighths inches, not to put too fine a point on it, and so mark that as well. Great. Now we're gonna square up from our midpoint. And in order to find a nice square, we can use the corner of a wide ruler, like my two inch by 18 inch here, or we can use an envelope or something else that has a 90 degree angle and we can just align the edge of our square object with the horizontal line and then slide it along until we meet up with the midpoint. Then trace upward. Doesn't have to be too far, an inch is more than enough, that's perfect. 
just as long as it's pretty much a right angle. And then finally, mark five eighths of an inch. So one, two, three, four, five eighths of an inch and make one more tick mark. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to, this is sort of a freehanding part and for some of you this will be a relief after the numbers that we just had to deal with and for others of you this will be a little more uncomfortable if you prefer precision and not so much freehanding, but basically you're going to try to create a pretty gradual curve connecting this midpoint up the 5 8 inch out to the end and then on the other side also. And it's totally fine if this curve and that one are not exactly symmetrical. This is more of a an educated guess as to the contours of your finger so that we get the right shape, but we'll be able to refine it on your finger, so no worries there. So now, this is the outer edge of your thimble that we just drew, meaning the one closest to your wrist. So now let's draw the edge that'll be closest to your fingertip. That is going to be three quarters of an inch in. So just sort of to show you the gesture of what we're about to do, it'll be something like this, but let's get the numbers right. So if you happen to have a clear gridded ruler, this will be a very easy, quick task for you. So you can find the three quarters, one, two, three quarters, line it up with the start of your upper arc there, draw a little bit, then rotate so that you're sort of um, parallel to the next bit of arc there, and continue to pivot the ruler as you go across. Quick. I like to call it exhilarating. You may find it so also. Um, maybe you don't have a clear gridded ruler and that's great too. In that case, use your other sort of ruler and find one quarter, half an inch, three quarters. Line that up with your outer arc. Try to make it perpendicular here make a little mark, move along, try to make it perpendicular, make a little mark, etc. Until you get to the end and you run out of upper arc. And then you can just quickly, again, sort of freehanding it, connect your dots. And that is beautiful and that is perfect. And now, Again, at sort of a right angle, but it doesn't need to be perfect because we'll have some extra. Just connect these two. So this shape here is what we're going to cut out. It's going to be important to understand how your thimble should fit. So your thimble should go on the middle finger of your dominant hand. I'm left-handed, so It'll be on my left hand middle finger, and it's an open topped thimble, remember, so I'm actually going to want to have a little bit of my middle finger peeking out the tip. Just a little bit, not much. This is my size. This one is not. <laughs> this one is not either. I'm not sure how easy it is to see, but I definitely don't have any fingertip peeking out at the end. So for me, this is the right fit. You may find after playing around and sewing with some thimbles that you prefer a slightly different fit. That's for you to experiment and decide what feels right to you, but this is what I would recommend for now. And it should be comfortable, it should be snug, but not too tight, and it should not fall off when you tip your hand over. got my piece cut out 
And now comes the exciting action part. I'm going to sort of drape it onto my finger. So remember the smaller curve, the inner curve, is going to be oriented toward my fingertip and the bigger outer curve is going to be closer to my wrist. And I'm also going to need my masking tape. So I'm going to rip a piece that's about six or eight inches long. And remember mine is almost an inch wide. So I'm gonna cut mine in half to be a bit narrower. So that it'll be a little bit easier for me to handle as I'm draping the cardboard. If you have masking tape that is about half an inch wide or narrower, then you're good. You don't need to cut it in half. Okay, so I'm going to position the cardboard near the tip of my middle finger of my dominant hand but not covering it because remember, I wanna have a little bit peeking out and then I'm going to place my thumb on top to hold it in place for myself. Then I'm gonna take my non-dominant hand and start to wrap around my finger, trying to keep it snug to my finger but not constricting and wrap until I run out of cardboard. So I've gone about two times around. There's definitely overlap. You may have less than two times around. You may have more than two times around. Either way is fine. If you feel like you just have too much going on, you could trim some. If you suddenly realize you don't have enough to have a good amount of overlap, you can go back to drafting, draft the same way we did, but then just sort of draw the lines continue the curves just a bit farther. No problem there. Um, okay, so I've got it wrapped around. I'm still holding it snugly. And then I'm going to use my masking tape to start wrapping and securing. And you may get a bit of buckling in your tape. No problem, just kind of smush it down. This isn't gonna be a beautiful object. It's just a scrappy, useful, awesome little thing that you made to help you with your sewing. And I feel pretty good about that. Lots of tape, nice and secure. Notice that I have a little bit of a corner here. So that's okay. Um, my draft, again, was just sort of an educated guess as to what might work. So now I can come through, now that I've draped, <laughs> for lack of a better word, onto my finger, sculpted onto my finger, now I can come through with scissors if I want and just trim away anything funky that happened at the edges. No big deal. And I feel pretty good about this. I hope you do too. I hope you've enjoyed making your very own open-topped thimble out of household materials. I hope that you and your thimble are well on your way to a very happy long friendship and I wish you happy sewing. Thank you. P.S. There are a couple of additional fun uses for your newly made homemade thimble that we have discovered at my house and in case you are bored or restless or whatever, perhaps you'd enjoy them also. Thimble football. <laughs> 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 what are we gonna call it? Like thimble war? Thimble, thimble duel, thimble.
Thimble duel, yeah. Okay. Thimble duel. Ha, 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 ha.